Good afternoon, everyone. For those of you who are new to the group, my name is Zari Kamari. I'm the head of Science Libraries. It's a pleasure to introduce you to Michelle Hazlett, our data services librarian. There's a group in the library called uh, the Data Management Committee. And uh, Michelle chairs that. Michelle and Barry Hazlett from, uh, uh, Barry Hayes from Health Sciences Library chair this group, and some of us uh, librarians are a member of this group. And uh, uh, Michelle is going to talk to you about the NSF data management requirements. Michelle, take it away. Hello. Uh, Zari just covered some of the material that I'm about to cover, so we'll just go through that more quickly. So the Data Management Committee is about 10 of us in the university libraries, both the Health Sciences Library and the Academic Affairs Library. Um, most of the members are health, or not health librarians, but science librarians. And there are a few of us sprinkled in from kind of the social sciences side of things. Um, our GIS librarian is in there too. We've been meeting for about two years and we're working with partners now across campus to support researchers who are concerned about managing their data. Um, our group started because we were beginning to see researchers who were either having problems with data management within their institutes or just had questions about what data management was and how to do it. So our approach in the library is to make researchers aware of the resources that are available to you on campus, either for um, computing solutions or uh, helping you write data management plans or whatever your need is around managing your data, helping you find the right resources to get the work done. So in this session, we're gonna talk about um, the plan requirements from the NSF in particular, a few key terms to make sure we're all on the same page, and then some things to think about as you go about writing a data management plan. We have some resources that we've put together for researchers in order to get you to the specific resources that you need, um, and there's going to be a lot of time at the end for discussion and questions. I've been asked to ask you to hold your questions until the end. We have a microphone to pass around to make sure that those questions get incorporated into the recording they're making of this session. So to begin with, um, this is the 1999 Office of Management and Budget Amendment to Circular, which establishes the authority under which the funding agencies are beginning to require data management plans and um, require that researchers share their data. Many funding agencies are moving in this direction. Um, it hasn't happened across the board yet, but it seems like almost every year there's a new one that's requiring um, data sharing or is putting out a policy about data sharing. They're all different. NSF in particular has had a long-standing policy that researchers should share their data, but what's changing now is the implementation because it wasn't a policy that was widely enforced. So this is the timeline of how this has happened. Um, in May of last year, NSF announced that there was gonna be a new requirement. In October, they put out the guidelines for what the data management plan should include and it became effective on January 18th of this year. So beginning in January, all NSF proposals now must include a data management plan. Um, the guidelines specify a 15-page proposal, and the data management plan can take up no more than two pages of that 15-page allotment. Um, it's not something that's added on top of your 15 pages, it has to be included within that. 
you can request additional funding to implement your data management plan, but it's just like any other grant. Once the grant is over, the funding's gone. So the money has to be spent by the time the grant ends. They put in this intriguing little clause that said, you don't actually have to have a data management plan. Your data management plan might just be a statement that you're not gonna have one, but you have to justify why that is. If you're not gonna have a data management plan, you have to explain, um, the, pardon me, the data is too sensitive to be released, the data can't be de-identified, um, whatever the circumstances that justifies you're not sharing the data, you have to spell it out. All of this is uh, based on an expectation that data will be shared. So your justification would have to be pretty good for not having a data management plan. Uh, these are the basic uh, materials that they are anticipating uh, people submitting, um, the types of materials that are going to be produced, the standards by which those materials will be organized, the policies for access and sharing, policies and provisions for reuse, plans for archiving, preservation, and access, and then the URL at the bottom is where all of this is spelled out. The key thing about this policy is that it's not very detailed. They're expecting the members of each discipline, each scientific community, to establish their own rules. Um, if there are best practices in chemistry that are different from biology, that is the community of interest that's going to establish those standards. Some of the smaller units within the NSF already have uh, more detailed guidance about how the data management plan should be formulated. Chemistry is not one of those. We don't have any more specific information yet than the general guidelines that the NSF has distributed. So now we're up to the terms. Um, when we're talking about data in, the, in this specific context, the NSF is talking about anything that is the research product of your proposal. Um, it doesn't have any kind of specified media or format. Um, if it's a curricula for a class, that's your research product. That's the data that they're talking about. Most people are pretty familiar with something similar to this as a research life cycle. You come up with an idea, you do a literature review, you get some grant money, and then you collect and analyze the data. But in fact, data has a role in every step of the research life cycle. And so the point of a data management plan is to consider what that role is, how you're gonna handle the data at each step. Um, obviously this uh, diagram isn't complete. Um, certainly as sharing data becomes more and more common, uh, you would want to check first which data are already out there, which data have already been collected. So probably in the literature review point of the cycle, you would want to do some searching of data repositories and see what might have already been um, experimented on, um, what experimental results have been archived in order to determine if somebody's already done at least some of the research that you are intending to do. So the point about sharing data and making it available for somebody else to use or for you to come back and use years after you collect, first collect the data, is that you have to help people understand what you did the first time. 
you may have, after years after you've done the research, you're probably going to have to remind yourself what you did in the first place. So the, the metadata are those pieces of information that are critical for you to collect and document in order for someone else to understand your data. What format are they in? What version of the software did you use? When was it collected? How was it collected? How did you document it? What are the variables that you created after the fact, once you had your data in hand? Um, all of those things are critical as a foundation for jumping off to other research. And a repository in this context is, um, are all of those um, organizations that archive data. Now, this happens in a lot of different ways. It can be a discipline-specific archive. Um, I believe there's a really large one of astronomy images. Um, it might be an institutional repository, like our Carolina Digital Repository here on campus. It might be a repository that takes your data and will give it back to you in 10 or 20 years in exactly the same way that you gave it to them. It might be a repository that migrates uh, the data through different uh, successive versions of a software. So there's a lot of things to consider when you're choosing a repository of where you're going to archive your data. Um, of these examples, Dryad is a life sciences repository that's here on campus, and ICPSR is the inner see, Inter-University Consortium for Political and Social Research. It's based at the University of Michigan. It has more than 300 institutional members worldwide. It's probably the biggest social science repository in the world. So these are questions to ask yourself as you're beginning to think about a data management plan. Um, when you archive your data, we're talking about ingest into a repository, how will you submit it? Are you going to um, leave it in the files that you ended up with at the end of your research? Are you going to only submit certain files? Um, are you going to submit only de-identified files? Um, what metadata are you supplying along with that for future users to look back on? Um, what access rights are important? Do some users have more access rights than others? Um, if faculty are using it, do you want to give them the microdata but only provide aggregate data to graduate students? And then, of course, copyright and intellectual property issues are important if you're using someone else's data that they've already collected or um, if you're licensing data from a commercial publisher to use in your research, that can't be shared. So you have to think about those issues. And under curation, um, if you're sharing data between different locations, does your policy follow the data to the other locations? Do you apply different policies to each of those locations, even though it's the same data? Um, that gets a little messy. And then in preservation, what does permanent mean? Are you talking about five years, 10 years, 100 years? And once you deposit it someplace, is it still your data? Do you retain the right to do other things with it, to get it out again if that uh, repository fails? Um, repositories have a lot of different funding models. Uh, you want to be sure to check that your repository is stable over time and that it's not going to just delete the data when or if they fail. So this is just to point out that over 
the research life cycle, you may need different policies at different stages. Um, if you plan those at the beginning of your research project, then you're much less likely to have emergencies along the way when uh, all of a sudden the graduate student's going to leave and there is no metadata and nobody else understands how the data is organized. So um, a planful approach, the data management plan itself can be a planning tool over the course of the life cycle of the research. So the data management committee has started with uh, brown bag series last fall. Um, a very similar workshop to this one was our first in November. That was followed immediately by another workshop that kind of compared and contrasted the Carolina Digital Repository and the Odom Institute's Dataverse here on campus. Um, the CDR is a very mediated kind of repository where they work with you to ingest the data, whereas Dataverse is sort of a self-serve kind of option where you create your own metadata. The most recent one was on January 31st. We had a faculty member in biology present about the Dryad repository and how decisions that you make in the process of ingesting your data there very closely follow uh, the stages of a data management plan. We have a lot of other topics that we have in mind, but we are also always taking suggestions for new ones. So if there are issues particular to chemistry, please let us know. Um, Zari takes suggestions, I take suggestions, my email is at the end of this presentation. Um, any of the librarians really can pass suggestions along to us for workshops that you want to see. The Research Data Toolkit is available from the library's website. Um, it's on the left-hand side, right-hand side, when you look at the web page. And we provide templates for developing data management plans with questions to consider for each of the pieces that the NSF wants to see. We have some example data management plans up. Um, how closely they will resemble your data management plan is um, perhaps not likely, but it at least gives you a sense of how other people have dealt with the question. We have a lot of profiles of campus resources, not only um, repositories, but also consulting services, um, programming solutions, other computing storage solutions. Um, if people need help de-identifying their data, what services on campus are available for that? So there's a lot of information there about resources available right here on campus. <coughs> this listserv is not a listserv that anybody signs up for kind of thing. It's really a closed listserv where anyone can submit questions and the people who are on the listserv are members of the data management committee, um, some staff in the vice chancellor's office for research and development, and uh, some other folks, so that as we get those questions in, we can triage them and make sure that you are directed to the person best able to answer your question. Oh, Odom Institute, that's the other staff. So this is my contact information. I have business cards if you want to pick one up. Um, please contact us if there's other ways we can help you. Um, when you do something like the data toolkit, you sort of put it out there and you may or may not get a lot of feedback about how well it's helping people. So every opportunity we have to meet directly with users and ask for feedback, we try to do that. If you see stuff there that's really helpful for you, we'd like to know that. If you don't see anything there that's helpful, we want to know that too so we can make it better. What questions do you have about data management plans? Did you show them the toolkits address? Uh, let's see, that's back up. Here it is. 
the bottom here. It's kind of a long one, so if you'd rather just go to the library's website, that's just that first part, www.lib.unc.edu, and then the link is on the right side. Does chemistry have a metadata standard or a repository? There's so many different kinds of chemistry. I think there's many different repositories. Okay. We, on the toolkit, um, there was a study done at the library school here on campus last spring by a PhD student and a faculty member to survey science data repositories and find out how standardized they are. And essentially they found out that they're not standardized at all. But they came up with a list of more than 100 different repositories. And you know that was just the tip of the iceberg. So um, we actually have that spreadsheet on the toolkit website if people are interested in seeing what other science data repositories are out there. We've had mixed results there. Um, some people are sure, share them, put them up there. Um, most of the ones that we have links to are not ones that we specifically have collected, um, but we link to ones that the Odom Institute has put up and uh, some others are apparently coming from RENCI. Uh, Renzi has helped a number of people with their data management plans. So I don't have an overwhelming sense that people want to protect them. Um, but of course, it's such a new process, we don't know who's successful yet. So I don't know if that might change once uh, those successful ones start to come out. Can I also yeah. people are pretty protective uh, of their data. And after it is published, what is published, uh, they're willing to share. But not overwhelmingly. I mean, right, right now, I think because of this requirement, there is more willingness to share. But, uh, but I'm, I'm not sure how it would have played out before this, this requirement. I was specifically speaking to right, the plans. The plan. Yeah. Um, not necessarily the data. I can understand not wanting to share your data. Mm -hmm. but, um, at, 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 and that's a specific solution. So one more question. Um, uh, tell me about the Carolina Digital Repository and, and um, you know, how how many data sets does it have now? And is it is it um, you know prepped and ready to handle different kinds of data sets, or or are you really trying to Well, we certainly are including it as one piece of many options because it's really the researcher's decision where they want to put it. Um, but the staff at the CBR are in conversation with faculty about depositing data sets. Um, I don't know that they have actually ingested, like completed ingest of any, but there are several that are in the process. Other questions? Anyone else? Okay, well, thank you so much for sharing. Sure.